All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for more One Piece. I was going to start this within the first 30 seconds, but I had to step away real quick. But let's go ahead and get the formalities out of the way, shall we? Yo, peoples, Kyushu92 here, and welcome back to yet another live reading of One Piece. Today, we are going to be going through volume 31 of the series and the final volume in the Sky Pia Saga titled will be here Whew. because the next set of volumes the next uh let me see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen the next 14 volumes after this one will all be centered on water seven and then after that is Thriller Bark, then after that is Saba Odi, then after that is Impel Down, after that is the Paramount War, and then the introduction of the time skip. So yeah, yeah, I had to go, I had to re-go through those again. So let's go ahead and get this started. I think I got my mic at a comfortable place so you all can see me, you know, comfortably and I'm sitting comfortably. So let's go ahead and get started with volume 31. <clears throat> the story of One Piece. Monkey D. Luffy started out as just a kid with a dream to become the greatest pirate in history. Stirred by the tales of pirate red-haired Shanks, Luffy vowed to become a pirate himself. That was before the enchanted devil fruit gave Luffy the power to stretch like rubber, at the cost of being unable to swim, a serious handicap for an aspiring sea dog. Undeterred, Luffy set out to sea and recruited some crewmates, master swordsman Zoro, treasure hunting thief Nami, lying sharpshooter Usopp, Shudu, Shudu, I know what I said. Lying sharpshooter Usopp. The high kick, high kicking, high kicking. Why did I say high kicking? The high kicking chef Sanji, Chopper, the walking, talking reindeer doctor, and the mysterious archaeologist Robin. The straw hat pirates reached the island in the sky, Skypea, a land ruled by the powerful Kami Enaru, but they're charged with trespassing. When the crew gets separated, Luffy, Sanji, and Usopp faced the tough challenges put, put up by the Kami's vassals, while the rest discover a shocking secret about their surroundings. Mythical Upper Yard was originally part of Jaya Island. A treasure hunt for the island's legendary city of gold is in order, but before they can reach the riches, the crew gets caught up in a, in a battle between the Kami's army and the Shandians, a group of natives fighting to recapture their ancestral land. Enaru's true objective is to demolish Skypeo with all of its inhabitants as he sets off for endless Vars. But he didn't count on one rubber man to foil his electrifying plans. Now that Luffy's arm is trapped in a huge ball of gold, Enaru is free to carry on his dastardly celebration. So, today we got chapters 286 all the way down to 295. So, yeah. Let's get started with chapter 286, The Shandoran Demon. Ace's Great Search for Blackbeard, volume 13. Heard a disrespectful comment about Whitebeard, and it shows Ace beating up a Navy officer because he apparently said something mean or bad or disrespectful about Whitebeard. And I guess Ace couldn't help himself. But now we get back to the old lady who was taking pictures at the... Hold it right there. Uh, it's, it's the old lady who's taking photos. You know, the person that was taking photos of the Straw Hats when they first entered. She's taking photos because apparently people are leaving in massive droves. Hold it right there. Your exit fee. That would be two billion X dollars per person. Ms. Amazon, you need to hurry and run, to run away too. Ah? Uh -huh. Heaven's Gate, the White Sea. Hurry to Cloud's End. And then it cuts to uh, everyone else going, 
this country is done for. And then this old lady just keeps taking pictures. Ms. Amazon. Amazon keeps taking pictures of everyone because they are not paying her the, en the exit fee. But she doesn't know what's going on as she continues to take photos of everyone. This, this country is done for. It's going to be destroyed. Angel Island, White White Sea. Get off the island! Run! Run! Because the last chapter we had had Enaru starting to destroy all the islands with this uh, massive, massive lightning storm attack called Mamaragan. And it's been unleashing... It's been unleashing deadly lightning bolts all over the entire region. Run! Run! The lightning just keeps getting bigger and bigger! The ships in the harbor were wrecked! Head west of the beach! Quickly! There are still boats there! Run to the west! And then it cuts to Captain McKinley. Quickly, people! Leave your belongings behind! And then it cuts to the other side of the force, as it shows Connus, who's waiting, still on the Mary. And then it cuts to the giant Jack, as Luffy continues to run up it. Uh, that arc is fast! Nyanarul! Chief, hurry! Get to the ship! Yes. Oh, great warrior Kalgara, please protect everyone. And it continues to show lightning hitting everywhere, including the ruins near Robin and everyone else. Because everyone else is down on the ground right now. Some of them are unconscious, but uh, everyone else is right there. Is right there with everyone. Uh, everyone else is right there next to this big explosion. And Usopp screaming as normal. Ah! That lightning bolt was huge. If we stay here, we're gonna get we'll get burned to a crisp. Then it cuts to Nami. Everyone, hurry to the ship. I'll go get Luffy. We'll be right behind you. Uh, all right, uh, understood. If the enemy is up in the sky, even Luffy may not be able to. Please let me get there in time. Let us make it out of here somehow before this entire country is destroyed. And then it cuts to Wiper, who stands up. Robin, hurry! We've got to carry them to the ship somehow! And then Wiper stands up. Huh? Wiper! Goes Isa. Swordsman! Weird guy! As Zoro wakes up and Ganfor wakes up. <laughs> In the room, goes Ganfor. Thank goodness you're awake! Hey, we're running out of time! Can you walk? <sighs> it has begun, goes Ganfor. And then it shows Sanji and Chopper who are still asleep. Well, still unconscious. And that includes Pierre as well. Then it cuts to Robin. We must hurry. There's nothing more we can do here. Wiper! As it cuts to Wiper who's just staring off. Staring off into the distance as uh, Enaru's attack just just destroys all the islands. Yeah! <laughs> what a view! As he's on the Maxim, just watching all this lightning set fire and destroy everything around the point of impact. Wiper! I swear on the great warrior Kalgara. Bring back the light of Shandora! Huh? Wiper. And then it cuts to a flashback a little while. It uh, cuts to a flashback. Wiper, your distant ancestor, the great warrior Kalgara, had one other reason for wanting to take back our homeland, no matter the cost. Another reason? Yes. To Kalgara, it was his greatest regret. Listen closely. The great warrior Kalgara had a dear friend. A dear friend? Yes. Four hundred years ago, he came. His name was... Montblanc Noland. Whoa! Okay. Okay. I was wondering about why Nolan was on the cover. Oh, this dude on the cover, cover is Calgara, isn't it? Wow, it took me forever to just figure that out. Okay. Mont Blanc Noland. And as this is happening, Mamaragan is just still destroying everything that it, it, everything it touches. 
And then we get some narration. This is a tale from long, long ago. Let us travel back 400 years. Jaya, the Grand Line 400 years ago. Get back to the ship. He's not human. It's the demon of Shandora. He's going to kill us. He's a monster. Hurry, get on the ship. He's here. Yeah! He's coming. He's coming. Captain, save us. Go, get us out of here. Wait, wait, Captain. We're still. And it cuts to the big ship sailing away. He's here. Forgive me. And it cuts to an individual who's standing. It cuts to the an individual who's standing on the beach. And they have like this big chain. And they swing it forward. And this massive, gigantic iron ball just goes directly into the ship and completely capsizes it. I will eliminate you. And it cuts to these pirates apparently trying to defend themselves, to defend themselves. But it's no use because this dude just basically wipes the floor with every single one of them and then also destroys their ship as well. <laughs> Leave everything behind and go. Kalgara, the great warrior of Shandora. So that's who. Okay, okay. So I was right. That is Shandora on the cover. Okay. That is Kalgara of Shandora. I was about to call him Shandor. Why was I thinking that? But that is uh, Kalgar on the cover. And he just destroyed, the whole ship just destroys it. He just gets destroyed as, they, as the rest of the pirates sail away. And he just walks away laughing to himself. <laughs> Somewhere on the Grand Line. It's just one storm after another. Giant whirlpools, snow, and still no sign of an island. Yo, Gajil, good to see you. We are going through volume 31 of One Piece, and we just got introduced to a dude called Kalgara. Amaru, here. Here's my report. We've reached the end of our provisions. We are now officially in Dar Straits. <gasps> the cook collapse. No more f- No more food? Blast. And then someone just jumps off the ship. Amaru? <laughs> uh, well, what's going on? The Admiral fell into the ocean. Yo, Ozzy, good to see you as well. The Admiral fell into the ocean. Does he know this is the Grand Line? Did he jump ship? He abandoned us. Admiral! Admiral! Was he so hungry he chose death instead? Don't talk nonsense. He's a great man. He's made it back from this ocean twice already. His nerves are probably stronger than all of ours combined. Then how do you explain these neatly folded clothes and shoes? Uh, hey! Somebody go after him! No way! These waters are swimming, swarming with monsters! He's not coming up! And then it shows, like... What looks to be like a giant... Uh, it shows like a chestnut coming up out of the water. Oh, a chestnut? A chestnut? Uh, Admiral, welcome back, sir! Yep. It gave a good fight. Here. Huh? What's this rope? Haul her up. And there's a massive fish. There's a massive sea monster just attached to this rope. Whoa! What, what is that thing? Admiral? Did you catch this thing while you were down there? Let's eat. Not doing anything really does dull the senses. Mont Blanc Nolan! Exploration Ship Admiral of the Livneal Kingdom of the North Blue. Wow, okay, okay. So Nolan was a strong joker in the back. I didn't know, I didn't know. I just knew of Nolan from like his outward appearance, but I didn't know of Nolan being like this super strong dude in the past. Not doing anything really dulls the senses. And that's the end of chapter 286. Onwards to chapter 287, Kami Killing. Oh, this blasted storm is a letting up, Admiral. Sure seems that way. How can you be so calm? We've lost the yard arm. Where is it? The, the main sta the main mass, the main mass. Bring, bring a rope, a rope. We've been at sea for over two years now. 
Compared to the two one-month voyages I took in the past, it's like a miracle. Huh? Hey, did you hear something just now? Huh? Uh, do you mean the thunder? No, something beautiful, like the sound of a bell. May 21st, year 1122, the age of Cayenne. Jaya, the Grand Line. And it cuts to, like, this old Shandorian village. Shandoran village. I praise Pandori! Stay with us! Pandori! You must guide us! One more person, then another will die. The crops will succumb to death as well. Only blood will flow into the earth. This land has been cursed. If things keep on like this, this village, all of the Shandians, will be wiped out. <sighs> what should we do, Pandori? Never fear. Just do as I say. Pay tribute to the gods through the great Kashigami. Blood! You must offer blood on the sacrificial altar! Offer the blood of the most beautiful maiden in the village to Kashigame. And this dude is just losing his mind because he looks like he's in the last throngs of his life, apparently. Musi, offer that girl that sacrifice. It is the only way. And then Pantori, apparently Pantori dies because his hand just slips from the grip of someone else. It's no use. He has no pulse. First the old, first the old medicine woman, and now Pantori's life as well. Who will guide us now? How many does this make? How many are dead? More than a hundred. How can this be? Nothing like this has ever happened in the past. Huh? Hey, hey, you! What's that mark? And then he points, the dude points to, uh, points to an individual who has, like, this strange rash on his arm. Uh, what? Huh? Ah! And this dude just starts booking it outside of the village. Wait! Set Paul! Don't follow him. But, but! Once the mark of the evil spirit has appeared, once that happens, he's done for. Uh, if this is a nightmare, let me wake up. Uh, uh, I'll disappear. Disappear. No. And this dude is using a rock to try and just. Just grind whatever this thing is off of his skin. Like he's like trying to stab it off of him. Like he's trying to like just. Stabbing into it repeatedly with this sharp rock is just going to make it disappear all of a sudden. And he's doing it to the point where his arm is bleeding. Ow. And then it cuts to this woman going, If there's a chance it would help us, then I'll gladly offer myself. And it cuts to this other woman who's just crying profusely. Why are you crying, Mama? I'm going to meet the sun god. It is an honor to be chosen as a sacrifice. If my life can be of use to the villagers, then I'm happy. Thank you for raising me, Mama. Mose! And it, like, this, this mother is just embracing her child. Then it cuts to this individual, the same dude that had the mark on his arm, and he's just crying in the rain. Great warrior, Calgara. Seto. I might have to change Calgara's voice a little. Seto. I, I wanted to be just like you someday. I wanted to be a courageous warrior. I wanted to fight to protect this land. I don't want to die this way. We still don't know what type of disease this is. Wow. That's just what I... That's just what I'd expect from you, Admiral. We've turned the helm in the direction you said and there really was an island there. <laughs> You can't ride a waver! Because it shows them trying to ride a, a waver in the background, but it, it ain't working. 
It looks like we'll manage to weather out the storm. Good. You men really didn't hear it? No, none of us heard the bell, right? Yeah, you must have been hearing things, Admiral. Woohoo, dry land! What a magnificent forest. Hope we'll find some new species for our research. Huh? Jaw! 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 Why do they keep facing that way? And it shows the south birds. And they're all looking in that one specific direction. <laughs> Admiral, maybe that's the sound you heard. <laughs> Come now, quit teasing. I would never mistake that sound for the sound of these weird birds. <gasps> Admiral, that's... Huh? And then there's a clang sound. A clang sound. So they all start to hear the bell as well. And all of, of Nolan's crewmates just stand there silently as they listen. Amazing. What a beautiful sound. <sighs> Apparently there really are people here. Wait! Wait a minute, Admiral! Huh? Somebody's collapsed over here. Oh, no! Invaders! Admiral, this kid, something's wrong with him. Hey, boy. Wait! Hey, you! And this the villager that had the mark on his arm, the, like the rash marking on his arm, he start he just takes off. And then the kid hobbles, and then he I guess he falls over because they got the kid laying directly in front of him. Ugh, at spring fever. He hasn't been treated at all. Ah, tree. It's not spring. Why did I say spring fever? It's tree fever. That is something that the four kids would do. Blaspheme. Blaspheme. It's Trey Fever. He hasn't been traded at all. Ah! Trey Fever? Yeah, not good. This is this all in his bad news. It's the plague, goes Nolan. Do we have any Connie? Do we have any Connie? Uh, Conine? Co Conine? Conine? Yeah. Do we have any Conine? Uh, only a little. Vaccinate all of us. Admiral, you can't mean... We're gonna have a look around. And then Nolan just goes... Just goes, and uh, apparently we see the village, but it's empty. It's eaten away at the crops, too. This is awful. Admiral, there are only sick people here. Aren't there any healthy people? Hey, answer me. What's happening here? And the kid, d and then, uh, what is his name? Seto. Yeah, his name is Seto. Seto doesn't say anything. And then we cut to the rest of the Shandorians, who are... Shandians, not Shandorians, Shandians, who are just beating on the drums as uh, Muse is being led to the sacrificial altar. S coincidentally, the same sacrificial altar we see later, we see in the present day. But here, it's like, it's such a juxtaposition. Like, 400 years really has caused the whole force to overgrow this whole area. Take the girl to the altar! Gold of the sun, gold of the rain, gold of the forest, gold of the earth. We offer you the blood of this girl and ask that you show mercy to our village. Yeah, the Kami has arrived. It's here. It's the great Kashigami. Kami. And then this creature, this long slithering creature, rises up out of the ground. And Musei's mother just screams out as she goes, Musei! Give up, give it up, it's for the good of the village! Seto Kaiba. <laughs> oh, Seto Kaiba. Okay. But this giant creature rises out, and it's the... It's the giant snake that we see in the present day. But it's not as big here. Oh, great Kashigami! What a divine form you have! Great Kashigami! I beg you, save my mother! My son! Please save my father! And this creature continues to look at Musei, who's just... just laying there. And then something splashes in the water. Uh, what was that? Something fell in! And then we cut to uh, the Kashigami. The, 
Yo, okay. Um, it's not just a regular splash. It's Nolan, who's already on the top of this altar. And he cuts off the head of this snake with one swift stroke. I didn't know Nolan was this strong. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Soto Kaiba, he's a character from Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, but Nolan cuts the head off of this snake, and the head falls into the water. Great Kashigane! Ah! Oh, good you! Gummy killing! Who is he? Kill him! He's cursed us all! And then it cuts to Nolan cutting the bonds off of Musei. Kill the girl! Kill the intruder too! This this ceremony is over. We must offer blood immediately! Shed blood on the altar! You, m you must have been terrified. You're safe now! There's no need for you to die! And, uh, Calgara is also there present in the crowd, and he just glares. Calgar is there also, and he doesn't say anything as the chapter ends. That's the end of chapter 287. We got an SBS, and then we can move on to chapter 288. Oda! The question corner is starting. Ta-da! All right, I said it. I really said it. I'm so excited. I bet you all thought I had given up lately, didn't you? That was naive of you. Very naive. I've been waiting for a chance, biding my time. Ah, this feels great. I won't let anyone hijack this anymore. Come on, bring it on! Reader, Oda-sensei, I've been watching One Piece and I have a question. How come Luffy and Zoro and the rest don't have armpit hair? I'm younger than Luffy, but I got a ton of this stuff. How come they don't have armpit hair? Really, why not? Signed, really, why not? Oda, did you want me to draw that? If everyone wants it, I'll totally draw it, you know. A lot of it, too. Question, what does Zoro's new technique, the 108-pound phoenix, mean? Tangerine. Or the insert number pound phoenix mean. Answer. It's a reference to how cannons are classified as in 12 pounder gun and 24 pounder gun. The number refers to the weight of the cannonball. Even with a 12 pounder gun, the weight of the cannon itself is more than a ton. One pound equals about 0 0.45 kilograms. There you go, Cohagen. There's your correct uh, weight, weight measurements. You've got to be careful not to mix it up with fondue vu. Fon, uh, fond de veau. That's one, that one's used in French cooking. Also, the Japanese word for phoenix sounds just like the word for gun, by editor. Chapter 288, Curse. Ace's Great Search for Blackbeard, Volume 14. The Intruder, Commander Ace! And it shows that Ace has changed his clothes, still eating, and put on the clothes of a rear admiral. And he's just hiding away from the rest of the Navy soldiers who are chasing after him. And he's put on like a fake mustache. And put on like a full suit. But a poorly, poorly dressed tie. And he's just still eating a whole heaping helping of food. But we cut back to the sacrificial altar. Shed blood! She shed blood on the altar! We'll all be cursed! He killed a god! Is it really a god if it can be killed? He killed a god! Great Kashigame, please forgive us! Great Kashigame! Ah. Uh. What's to be- Ah! Uh, what's to become of us? That was Banduri's dying message! What has that man done? We must offer blood! Offer more to the gods! More sacrifices before we incur their wrath! And then it cuts to- It cuts to Nolan's crew on the outside. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. What'd he do now? Admiral, what'd you get yourself into this time? They're saying he killed a god. What's that mean? These tribal ceremonies shouldn't be messed with. Galgara! Kill that man! Quell the god wrath! Great warrior Galgara! And it cuts to Calgara, who's right at the bottom of the steps. And then Nolan looks at him, and then Calgara looks at him. And then Musei just looks on. I'm an explorer from the N Livnil Kingdom in North Blue. It doesn't matter who you are. Oh, wait. I'm an, I'm an explorer from the Livnil Kingdom in North Blue. It doesn't matter who you are. I will eliminate you. And then Calgara clashes with Nolan. Is that... 
I don't remember setting my phone to that notification. Why? It was going so well, I didn't have any interruptions. Why? Why must it do this? Why was it do this? I'm trying I'm trying to change I was changing my ringtones on my phone because I always have like this technical sound and I always have the uh Boba Fett sound, but I need some new ringtones. But it cuts back to Nolan clashing with Calgara. Is that how you people handle your problems? Just by eliminating them? Whether insignificant or important, even if it's progress, you have Oh wait. Whether insignificant or, or important, even if it's progress? You have no right to lecture me, intruder! Atone to the gods right now, before you doom us all! Amazing! It's amazing! He's holding his own against Kalgara! And it cuts to Nolan still fighting uh, Kalgara. In the rain, mind you. And then someone throws down throws down a uh, throws down a knife in front of Musei. End your life with that knife, Musei. You are a sacrifice for this entire village. To shed tears, tears now, wanting to leave. Have some shame. Wow, this man is literally saying like you crying over being a sacrifice to the village is shameful. Mind you, this is 400 years ago, but still, like bruh, bruh, chill. What? As Muse holds a knife to her to herself, preparing to knife to herself, preparing to you know commit Sudoku. Stop this insanity! And then he slaps away the knife from Muse, and she gets knocked back from that as well. And in that moment, Nolan also gets stabbed straight through the shoulder. He gets impaled by Calgata. Yeah. But it looks like he probably got him in the shoulder. <gasps> Admiral! You guys, this island, for hundreds of years, has closely adhered to the commitment to keep out intruders. Oh. This island, for hundreds of years, has closely adhered to the commandment to keep out intruders. Do not underestimate the warriors of Shandora. And on top of trespassing, you committed the mortal sin of kill of Kami killing. Your death alone won't be enough to atone for that. We'll make one hundred of you pay with your lives. And then it cuts to Nolan, who, after getting impaled through the shoulder, just goes full. All you speak about is a life, is a life, sacrifice, blood. Do you think that pleases the gods? This ceremony is barbaric! What's a... Admiral? This savage ceremony is an affront to progress. I won't stand it! People like me, explorers and researchers, we set out to sea in the hopes of making the world a better place! This is an insult to everything we stand for! And these gods of yours, who you claim demand blood, aren't you giving them too much credit? Give me time. I'll drive this evil spirit out of your village. If I fail, then you can go ahead and do it your way. Y what? Nonsense! How insolent! Do you think you're a god? And then Nolan just... This dude just got stabbed. Just got impaled. Enough for the spear to actually go out the other side of his chest. And he's just standing there, giving this Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt rousing speech. Because remember, Teddy Roosevelt had uh, Teddy in the uh, in the past. Teddy Roosevelt was given an, uh, a speech out in public, and someone shot him, and it didn't do. And the bullet got went in him, and he was all like, "Ah, dang! I know I've been shot right now, but I want to finish my speech." This man Nolan's got that level of durability. This is foolishness. You're going to die here and now. You're obviously planning to run for it. If I don't run away, if I manage to save your village from this tragedy, then swear to me you'll never hold this ceremony again. And then one of the vi village elders goes, Go ahead and try. While you do, we'll hold your crew captive. Chief! No, oh, Chief! 
If you have not succeeded by tomorrow evening, these men will die. Fine by me. And then it cuts to the village and a massive cage where all of Nolan's crew are just in there. Hey! Hey out there! Bring us some dry clothes! Clothes! <clears throat> We're gonna catch a cold in here! Sheesh! Oh man. Oh man. How did this happen? We're gonna get killed tomorrow evening! Don't talk nonsense. Trust the Admiral! It's not about trusting the ma it's not about trusting the man if there aren't any Kona trees in this forest. Then trust that there are trees while you're at it. Hey, Missy, you got it bad too, eh? Being born into a superstitious village like this. If you'd been born in our country, you could have gotten married to a noble or something. You sure pretty enough. Right? Knock it off. This girl was about to be killed just a short while ago. Lay her lay off her. And then it cuts to Musei, who speaks. Who was that man? Oh, him? Uh, he's an explorer. He's famous in our kingdom. He's also a botanist. He goes to uncharted islands all over the world, discovering new varieties of plants and studying them. There are plenty of explorers that have an interest in plants. It's an important role in any country. But he tends to stick his nose in everything. He can't just, he just can't leave this sort of thing alone. Not that we don't trust him, mind you. I'm starving. When Bush comes to shove, he always comes through for us. But if... Trust him. Now go to sleep. And then Musa just ponders on this fact from his crew. Chief, why didn't you let Kadgar kill him? They broke the commandments of this land the, the, the instant they set foot here. That man killed the great Kashigami. If we don't do anything, we'll bring down, we'll bring disaster down on ourselves. We uh, will, we'll have our answer by tomorrow. He says he'll save the village. There can be no harm in waiting. How can you be so calm? This reminds me of how the crew was wondering how Nolan could be so calm in the middle of the massive rainstorm on their way to Sky, well, to Jaya. How can you be so calm? He's only human. This village is possessed by an evil spirit that only the gods can take away. Pantori could converse with the gods, and here we didn't fulfill his last command. There will be consequences. Galgara, say something to him. If I sense even the slightest danger for the village, I intend to go take that man's head right then and there, even without waiting for tomorrow evening. Ugh. Do as you please. Old Pantori is dead now, and I don't have the power to hear the voices of the gods. However, even I can hear the words of a wise man. That's all. <laughs> Calgara! And it cuts to Calgara, who walks outside, and Seto's sitting outside. Seto, shouldn't you be lying down? I'm cured. What? Great warrior Calgara, what is progress? Huh? Found, and then it cuts to Nolan in the forest. Remember, this kid had a disease where he was going to be dead very quickly. But Nolan came along and basically using new age magic, basically healed him with his knowledge of science and, and medicinal herbs and whatever. You know, the same thing that Dracula's wife got persecuted and burned for in the Castlevania Netflix series. That should be a video game, just saying. He basically did it for this kid, and he's already, he's already cured. Yo, Psycho, good to see you. Welcome. Great warrior Kargara, what is progress? Mm. And then it comes to Nolan in the forest. Found one, a Kona tree. Well, with this many trees, it was only to be expected. Then it cuts to Dawn. It cuts to Dawn. I said that very, I, I forced that enunciation a little hard, didn't I? Dawn, and it cuts to all, it cuts to Nolan's crew still inside of this massive cage. One thing I didn't notice is that Nolan also has like this gigantic, massive member of his crew that's in his cage as well. And mind you, the cage is very tall. You can't touch the roof of this cage because it's that high off the ground. But just this one member of Nolan's crew is big enough where its head, his head touches the top of the cage. But everything starts shaking around them. Huh? 
This is it! I knew this would happen! A tremor? Ah! This is it! The wrath of the gods! It's the gods of the great Kashigami! As an earthquake starts happening. And then everything starts shaking. Uh, earthquake! Ah! Hey! Let us out of here! And then someone starts running. Uh, someone starts running. This one is a b lot bigger than usual! I know it! It's his fault! It's all because of him! Protect the sick! We were all really cursed by the evil spirit, and now... Now we think of the gods as well! And it cuts to the Elder, who's just looking up. Silently. And then it cuts to Kalgara. I knew I shouldn't have let him live! And Kalgara is, you know, Naruto jumping, just jumping uh, from trees like Naruto, and it cuts to an outside view of the island, and it continues to rumble. And then there's a massive crack in the ground. Going through the middle of this village. Look, a crack in the ground. Like the Admiral's okay? Admiral! It's terrible. It's terrible here. The forest floor. It's sinking. The island seems like it could split apart at any moment. As it shows part of Jaya splitting apart. Now we kind of knew. We kind of know where this would eventually lead. And then Kalgara comes up across a crevice where it shows... It shows that Nolan has apparently been crushed between literally two entire land masses. Am I, am I looking at this correctly? Is this man crushed between two, I, two massive portions of island? Is he really crushed between this? <laughs> Serves you right. Looks as though the gods decided to punish you for your contempt. And then... It shows, because Calgara thinks that Nolan's dead, but Nolan starts moving. <sighs> then the gods aren't so tough after all, are they? They didn't have enough power to kill one mere mortal. You're a stubborn one. Why did you come here? To kill you, you killed Karashigami. As long as you're alive, the village won't be safe. Couldn't you tell from the earthquake? Kashigami? Oh, that snake, huh? It didn't even look tasty. Why you? Sorry, but could you go away? I don't want to see your face now. Like, <laughs> this man is crushed between literal island falling on him and crushing him slowly but surely. And he's all like, could you go away? I don't want to see you right now. Sorry, but could you go away? I don't want to see your face right now. I don't want to see your face now. I gotta get to the village, and fast. Hmm, interesting. I'll watch over you. Go on, I want to see you struggle. And that is the end of chapter 288. Onwards to chapter 289, Full Moon! Ace's Great Search for Blackbeard, Volume 15. Military Court Coffee is bitter, as it shows Ace is apparently in this room with all these, uh, all these other vice admirals and captains, and they don't know that it's him, but he's just in there, and they're all drinking coffee, and they all hate the coffee. They all hate the coffee. But Chapter 289, Full Moon. And it cuts to Nolan, who's struggling to get out from being uh you know kind of crushing between these these two land masses and he starts co coughing curses <laughs> you got swallowed up in that fissure quite nicely most would think this is a sign from above i'm surprised you're still alive the tree fever that's attacking this village is a curable disease if I can get back to the village, I can prove it. Day has already broken. When the sun sinks in the western sky and dusk falls, the lives of your crew will be offered to the gods. Because you ruined the ceremony, we've incurred the wrath of the gods. Your current disgraceful state tells the story well. 
The ground moving is a sign of the god's power. You're helpless against it. And then it cuts back to the village. Galgara headed for the, vi for the forest. If he kills the Kamikela, the god's wrath should, be subs subs should subside for the time being. Papa! Papa! Another warrior has died. A pity he could not die honorably in battle. Have you finished the barrier urns? We've got lots of people waiting to be buried. I can't keep up if people keep dropping like flies. And then it shows the crops dying more and more. If you people hadn't come to this village, this never would have happened. We had it bad enough before you brought this earthquake, this earthquake upon us. If you, were this, if you hadn't obstructed the ceremony, we'd all be... Aye. Aye, wait, don't do anything I say. As it shows some uh, Shandians walking towards the cage as if they're preparing to kill the members inside. It's you people that are the evil spirits. We'll kill you right here, right now. Uh, hi, hold on. This isn't what you promised. Please, please don't. Wait, stop it. Hi. Why you? And then Seto comes up and he sits right in front of the cage. Seto, get out of the way. Because of them, last night my wife. The warriors of Shandora that I look up to have more pride than this. Your kid. And then the Elder looks on and Musei looks on. And then it cuts to Kalgara as Nolan. As Nolan continues to struggle to try and get himself unstuck from this fissure. And it shows that he does in fact do something to move. Does in fact do something to move. The whole landmass that's on him. Just how strong is Nolan? I'm sorry, but it's one thing to have a building fall on you. It's another thing to have like a giant piece of a ruin fall on you. But it's, an, it's another thing, a whole matter entirely, when you have a whole entire landmass just fall on you. Just like a whole bunch of earth just fall on top of you. Like, a, like, like having half of a park. Just fall on your back and you're, you're still alive, but you're struggling to get out. And that's just on you. Just, just like, okay. Duh. He moved the earth. As it shows the landmass moving and then coming right back onto Nolan's back again. And then Nolan gets hit hard and he actually coughs up a little blood. <sighs> As he's struggling, still struggling to try and get out. Then it cuts back as the sun starts to set. Prepare the ceremony. Take all the sacrifices to the altar. Leave none behind. Aye, wait, just a little longer. The admiral will come back, I tell you. Just two more hours. No, just one more. I'm begging you. Hey, kid, do something. Stop them. I don't want to be a sacrifice. And it shows Seto, who's kind of looking off to the side because... He really can't, he, 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 he doesn't want, he can't do anything. Why do we have to be burned alive? And then it cuts to some more people. They'll, they'll start the ceremony soon. Just hold on. And it shows this individual in bed with the same splotches on their skin like Seto had. And they're all just dying in their beds. Be patient for a little longer. And it's serious because some of them are like coughing up blood. They're bleeding from the mouth. So this is serious. The sun setting. There is not the ceremony soon. Really, what a pathetic sight you are. Here lies a man who defied the gods and lost. You struggled all day lo You struggled all day long. I'm impressed. And it shows Nolan still trying to move. He's coughing, but he's still trying to move. What are you people so afraid of? What? You're frightened of some unforeseen, some unseen terror offering up human lives just to make yourselves feel better? Just to make ourselves feel better. That's right. Human sacrifices aren't about the gods at all. They're selfish acts. They're pointless sacrifices. 
And then, Calgara, insulted by this, goes up and kicks Nolan in the face. I said this already, but getting kicked in the face is one thing. But getting kicked in the face with a bare foot, that's just, that's not just, that's not just rude, but that's just disrespectful. Like, the feet just going up against your face, just going up, just going up against your face as someone kicks you and you just feel toes. Like, you don't feel the tip of the shoe. You just feel toes. It just, just drag, just toenails, just drag across your face. I'm sorry, but that's just disrespectful. The highest height. Don't speak as if you know better. This is how people in this land have survived for hundreds of years. That doesn't make it right. And then Nolan just keeps getting kicked in the face by Calgara. Shut up, and outsider! <coughs> no matter how great your gods are, people's lives are more precious. You people were go just going to watch that poor innocent girl die. And, y and it didn't bother you one bit. I'll never understand that. You're all heartless. What you people are doing... Is despicable! You say it doesn't bother us to offer human sacrifices. Do you really think that? Even if the girl you saved yesterday was my own daughter? Whoa, okay, okay. Okay, I'm learning something new. Muse is the daughter of Kalgara. That's another reason why he was there. Hmm. Okay, 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 I'm sorry. Was my own daughter! How, how could you? You told your own daughter to give up her own life? Bandori could hear the voices of the gods. You can't possibly understand what powers his words have over us. Pantori's words are the god's words. Obeying them is the way of this village. I can't beg an exception just because she's my daughter. If we disobey, judgment always follows. And... There's a howling and snapping and crunching as he listens, and then we cut back to the sacrificial altar. And the whole situation with Muse just begins again. Bring the sacrifices to the altar! Burn them up and offer them to the heavens! Admiral! Admiral! And then Muse watches on as she's being led up the stairs right back to the sacrificial altar again, along with the rest of Nolan's crew. And this time, they didn't intend to burn all of them, so they've pretty much doused the altar in a whole bunch of oil and surrounded it by... They surrounded it with a bunch, a ton of wood, so that it, the whole thing goes up. Admiral! They're gonna burn us alive! It can't be. Do you think disasters keep striking without cause? It's unmistakably an act of the gods. K K and then something makes its way... Something makes its way through the forest, and it's a giant snake that's just casually eating a leopard. Kashigami! Uh, no, it's much smaller. Is it Kashigami's child? So, the snake that I originally thought was the one that we see in the present day was not the one that I, uh, was not the one that we see in the present day. Obviously, because that snake had its head cut off completely. But this is its offspring. Kashigami, no, it's much smaller. Is it Kashigami's child? Kashigami's blood has come to judge you. And it shows the snake licking its, like, licking its lips after eating this big old leopard and slithering as Nolan glares at it. This is judgment? So, in the end, am I being judged or am I dying in an accident? Is the village dying from a curse or will it die from disease? Sixty years ago, in my country, this tree fever which is now attacking your village became a plague and took a hundred thousand lives. It was a horrible disease, 
Anyone could ca who caught it had a 90% chance of dying. But in recent years, the rate of people who died from that same disease hasn't even reached 3%. That's because a botanist from the South Blue discovered an antidote during his explorations. It's, in the, it's a medicine called conine that can be extracted from the bark of the Kona tree. I have some of that in my right hand right now. If I take it back, I can make medicine. The village can be saved! And then it cuts to the snake as it gets closer and closer to Nolan as he's screaming. Do you know how many people over the world have spent countless years searching for this? Or how many sacrifices have been made? Do you? Your people are destroying this great progress. That's why I'm saying your rituals are slapping their faces. Your antiquated ways are the real evil. Are you that afraid of the gods? And then it cuts to a past words from the elder going, I don't have the power to hear the voices of the gods. However, even I can hear the words of a wise man. And then it shows Calgara, who's standing over the snake that was threatening to kill Nolan, and he's apparently killed this snake instantly. Tell me, just now, what did I kill? And then Nolan just goes, a snake. Wrong! I just broke the commandment and killed a god. But you say it was a snake. You say the curse killing the warriors and villagers is a curable disease. Will you really save my precious village? Can you save it? I can. And then time passes. It shows a massive crack in the... Rock this big landmass where Nolan was, and a hole where his body was, and then it cuts to the sacrificial altar. But it's quiet. This the wood is still around it, so nothing's been set aflame. And then it cuts to the moon. And then, oh, okay, it cuts to the villagers speaking with the crew of, of Nolan and everyone and all the people who had the, had the disease, this big old disease, the tree fever, they've all been cured. People are being able to reunite with their families. They're hugging their mothers and brothers. Seto is helping out and he's smiling while everyone is enjoying the revelry. Calgara can hold his daughter again and not worry about her being turned into a sacrifice. Calgara crying profusely, Muse crying profusely, the old elder looking up at the moon, Nolan just laying in bed as everyone watches over him, both his own crew and the Shandians alike with him just sleeping with a big old smile on his face. And everyone, Nolan's crew and the Shandians just enjoying themselves, having themselves a good old time, a good old party. All is right with the world! And that's the end of chapter 289. We can move on to 290, but before that, we got another SBS. Question! Oda-sensei, it's nice to meet you. I always enjoy reading your work. Let me get right to the point. There's something that I want to say very badly. It's about this. Ah, Chopper's head is so round and cute. No, that's not it! What I really want to say is, Chopper's horns aren't attached to his hat, they're attached to his head. Please explain this, I'd appreciate it very much. Mind you, someone brought up a similar question for Usopp, Luffy, and Sanji when they went through one of the challenges earlier on. And Usopp's whole set of teeth and his eyes popped out completely from his skull. But it's really Chopper and his antlers coming off of his head with his hat that draws the confusion so much. Please explain this. I'd appreciate it very much. Jewelweed. Answer. Well, I got a mountain of postcards pointing this out. The one thing I can say to everyone is, the truth isn't limited to what you can see. Chopper was so startled at the time that even his horns jumped up in amazement. He altered his body to communicate that to us, in a way that may even be in his own sort of cool- that may, e they may, may have been- can't read. That may have been his own sort of coolness, don't you think? In a way, that may uh, have been his- own sort of uh, cool, don't you think? Okay, next. Question. 
On the opening picture for chapter 284, sorry, you drew a very adorable dog smoking a cigarette. Even coming from you, Oda-sensei, this is unforgivable. Are you trying to make dogs unhealthy? Well, member number seven of the Society for the Protection of Animals. You do realize this dog is not real. There are people out there who will see pictures of things being depicted and think like, How dare you insult this creature? Dogs don't smoke cigarettes! I know. That's why I drew one. Because it would never happen in real life. There's people out there. Oda! Oh, I wasn't paying close enough attention. I'm terribly sorry. I'll give Sanji a good talking to over this, that guy. Ah, Oda, deflecting away from him and blaming it on Sanji. So, uh, chapter 290, The Light of Shandora. Ace's Great Search for Blackbeard, Blackbeard, Volume 16. Vice Admiral Cole Meal dislikes the base's bitter coffee. And it doesn't even show Ace in this. It just shows that one Admiral. And then we got a uh, small snake. We got a small snake. It's a snake. It's a viper. Don't let it bite you. Shoo, shoo, go away. This is, hey, Calgara. That's a shock. So it had the grandchild too then. That, that snake. <laughs> a snake, huh? <laughs> and then it cuts to the villagers. And Nolan's crew just looking on at these two men just laughing themselves silly. I don't understand those two. They were trying to kill each other on that altar just ten... They were trying to kill each other on that altar just ten days ago. And now... Now, now they get along really well. Plus, Calgara nursed the Admiral back to health. Oh, wait. Plus, Cal plus Calgara nursed the Admiral back to health. Of course he did. The Admiral is reasonable, responsible for saving their village. Why? Why are you the? Why are you the one bragging? Calgara has never been that friendly with anyone from the village, but it looks as though he's really hit it off with that with this guy. Even with their totally different person backgrounds, even with their totally different backgrounds, they seem to have found something in common. I've never seen Calgara laugh like that before. And then he cuts to Calgara and Noland. So, what is this thing you want to show us, Calgara? Follow me and you'll see. Hey, you! That's a cliff over there. We're going, we're going down from here. Oh, wait. That's a cliff over there! We're going... That's a... Hey, you! There's a cliff over there. We're going down from here. Going down? And then... As Nolan steps, he hears the clanging of a bell. He hears a clanging of a massive clanging sound of a bell. The sound of this bell. Hey, Calgara, where on earth is the beautiful sound of this bell coming from? And it cuts to the small snake that would later become the big giant snake that we see in the present because that, that's the one this time. It just sway, it's swaying at the happy sounds of the bell going... And we get some more south birds. And then Nolan makes his way downstairs. And then they get downstairs. And then all of Nolan and his crew make their way downstairs. And they walk into this vast, wide, open section of the city. With a giant bell. And it's just, it's a giant bell ringing. And it's just, a whole bunch of these places are just covered in gold. There's just so much gold all over this place. Have I seen Transformers uh, Rise of the Beast yet? Just wondering. I have not seen it yet. I want to see it, though, but I haven't seen it yet. And all of Nolan's crew goes, Speechless, are you? Shandora. Shandora, the city of gold. We're the descendants of those who built it. The city of gold? It's like a dream. Woohoo! It's covered in gold! It's out of Toronto! Hooray! Hey, you guys! It's fine. Aside from the belt arrow, you can take as much gold and treasure as you can pack onto your ship. The villagers have already given their consent. We owe you so much that we can't possibly thank you enough. You saved our tribe from that devil-sent disease. Compared to that, this is just... Yo, you're 
my generous guy, great warrior. But haven't your but haven't your people been protecting this city for ages? Yes, we've been protecting the city, but we weren't protecting the treasure. To be completely accurate, it was the stone. What's this? Are these letters? They're called poneglyphs. We can't read what is written, though. What's certain is that the city of Shandora was destroyed in a fight to protect this stone. Huh? A sacrifice of that magnitude leaves us no choice but to continue to protect it. It is our duty as descendants to protect the proof that our ancestors fought and lived here. Fought and lived. We, pres we, res we, we respect our ancestors as we would gods. I had no idea that it was such a big golden bell. The sound of this bell is really a message. The sound of this bell is really a message. A message? Our ancestors died and were taken into heaven, so that their souls will be able to find their way back to this land. We continue to ring this bell to spread this message. We are right here. The sound of this bell represents the undeniable glory of Shandora's past. We'll make its existence known to the ends of the seas. We won't run or hide. That's why this bell, the pride of the city, is called the Light of Shandora. That makes sense. Its ring sounds very majestic. You think so? Yes. In the midst of a storm, this light extended, ha uh, this light extended a hand to us. Even though I, should have been able, I shouldn't have been able to hear it through the storm, I heard the sound of this bell. And Calgara is there with Nolan and the snake that would become the giant snake in the future. Do you like it too? The sound of this bell? <laughs> I wonder if you'll become one of those giant serpents someday. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in another hundred years or so. Hey, stand here as lo stay here as long as you want, Nolan. Tell me more stories of your travels. Since Shandora's destruction 400 years ago, you're the first guest this land has had. We want to show our hospitality properly. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I also want to go into the forest and gather botanical specimens, and I'd like to oversee the tree fever treatment until it's finished. Admiral! Admiral! Oh, come now. What's with those outfits? Because it cuts to members of Nolan's crew just running up, and they're just covered in jewels. They're covered in gold. They're just running. This is... Oh, boy. They are they really are enjoying themselves. I'd imagine this is how Nami would be acting if she was back here 400 years ago. Oh, come now. What's with those outfits? It's a, a, an eternal pose. It's probably something we... It's probably something we took from an invader. A an admiral! A and a map! Admiral, it's a map! Yes, this skull shape. This skull shape. This is definitely a map of this island. D yes, this skull shape. This is definitely a map of this island. I wanted to make sure I read that right. And the location of the city is hidden in its name. Shandora means the skull's right eye. Nolan, Nolan says he'll give us... Nolan says he'll give us some weird crops. There's a greenhouse on the ship. There's a greenhouse on the ship. We have specimens of all sorts of plants. I'll leave seeds and shoots that will grow well in the, in the island's soil with you. Well, take care. He still needs to rest. Thank you so much. All right, you take that in. There we go. Thanks a lot. And it cuts to everyone helping rebuild. And then it cuts to Nolan as he shows different types of uh, different types of foods to the villagers. And then it also shows Nolan watching how other members of his crew are running from giant jaguars in the forest while he's looking for plants. Then we got a south bird. Then we got uh, Nolan traveling with Calgara, and the snake is keeping up with them as well. And then it cuts to Muse and everyone else dancing around the bonfire, and they are enjoying themselves. And then it cuts to Calgara and Nolan bringing up giant fishes to the island. Nolan and Calgara having a good time, enjoying themselves. And then it cuts to Calgara laughing. It cuts to Nolan ringing the bell 
while the snake is enjoying like the snake has been traveling with them wherever they go and then it cuts to Cal Gata and Nolan just having a drink in the sunset while the little snake is uh, like chilling in the background one month after landfall and then it cuts to a camp on the edge of the sea And then it cuts to someone going, Nolan and the rest are coming! Listen, don't say a word about what we saw last night. And then it cuts to an uh, outsider going, They said they set sail in a few more days. Make absolutely sure you don't do anything hasty. Understand? I knew it. I knew it. Our peoples can never see eye to eye. They make me good medicine, but in the end they're still men who have no qualms about killing gods! Wait, what's wait? What's going on? What's going on? But in the end, there are still men who have no qualms about killing gods. Are they so great they can trample in our, on our history? Stop it! They're here! Hi, everyone. Is Kalgara here? And then all of the villagers start being dismissive. Uh, hey, what's wrong? Everyone's so standoffish all of a sudden. Well, you were outside us to begin with. And this is Seto. Calgara says he doesn't want to see you anymore. Sero! How long before you people go home? Is that the saying that tried to eat the crew? Um... No. No, it's not the same fish. How long before you people go home? Huh? And Nolan's looking confused, like I'm confused. Oh, they seem to hate us all of a sudden. Yeah. Did we overstay our welcome? Hey, come on! You people were nice and friendly just yesterday, and now all of a sudden you're... Stop it. Let's keep working. There's still some force we haven't gotten to. I... I can't. I've got no sympathy to give them. Don't give in to your rage. Wait patiently until they set sail. Galgara, so this is where you were. And it cuts to an individual. It cuts to it cuts to Cal. It cuts to someone cu talking to Calgar, and Calgar is just sitting off on his own as he goes. I never want to see his face again. If I see him again, I just might kill him. What is going? What is going on? I don't know what's going. I see. I told you guys. I told you guys that I didn't read this, so I'm confused as to what's going on. I don't know the intricate parts of this story. What is going on to make Calgar hate Nolan so much? Rhetorical question. Don't answer. I'll I'm going to find out. We're going to find out. The bell didn't ring today, did it? Yeah, that's happened before, hasn't it? Where's the Admiral? Over on the rocks. Admiral. In two more days, we'll have covered the entire force, won't we? E yes. Tell the sailors we'll set sail in three days. We'll be on the sea again. Tell them to cherish the time they have on solid ground before we set off. Uh, Admiral, to be honest, this island has gotten pretty uncomfortable. Why don't we? We have to finish our job here and then we'll go. Go get some sleep. And then Nolan just has this very serious look on his face. What the heck is going on? But that's the end of chapter 290. Onwards to chapter 291. But before that, we got an S another SBS. Question. Hello, Mr. H. Oda. Thanks for everything. Lately, I've been rereading re One Piece from the beginning, and I realized something. The question corner used to be decent. When did it turn into such a whacked-out corner? Whose fault is it? It's been bothering me so much I can't control Gaiman's growth. My son is bothered as well. Help me! P.S. Did you know that there's a person inside Gacha Pin? Answer! Whoa, hang on there. That P.S. concerns me more than the main question. That's just how Gacha Pin is, I swear. There's no person in there. Please don't lie. Huh. By the way, apparently Gachapin is a dinosaur child, and Muku is a yeti. Well, okay, I can accept dinosaur child, but a yeti? He's red. A bright red yeti on a pure white snowy mountain. He stands out too much. Don't get me wrong, I like Muku. Japanese children grow up watching Ponkiki. Now, what was the question again? Ah, why is the question corner the way it is now? All I know for that is that it's not my fault. <laughs> Oh, I love Oda. I love Oda. He just goes on a full tirade. He's all like, oh, what's the reason why you don't like this? Eh, it's got nothing to do with me. Next question. 
Gachapin and Muku are characters from the live-action kids show Hirake. Hirake. Ponkiki. That's what the characters are called. Chapter 291 will be here. Ace's Great Search for Blackbeard, Volume 17. The top secret naval reconnaissance ship returns to port. Is this the same port that Ace is at? Okay. And then it cuts to... Then it cuts to a flashback within this flashback. As we see Calgara and Nolan uh, having a good time. You should live here, Nolan. Why don't you marry Muse? Eh, don't be silly. I got a family back home and a child about her age. I gotta get back. Calgara says he doesn't want to see you anymore. How much longer before you people go home? I know you're here, Calgara. Come on out! Why won't you talk to me? Tell me what's wrong! If you won't talk to me, I can't- If you won't talk to me, I can't understand anything! We're setting sail soon! I don't want to part ways like this! And then a spear comes flying in directly- Comes- uh, Something- A spear comes flying in directly next to Nolan and he dodges out of the way. Don't show your face in front of me again. Or would you rather death parted us here instead? Sorry, that didn't sound like an explanation! I'm just saying. I'm sorry, I'm getting loud. Calgara. And then it cuts to Nolan and his crew in the forest. And then it cuts to the villagers. The ship, has it left yet? Nolan's ship will leave soon. Don't have anything to... Don't have anything to do with those people. And then it cuts to Calgara, who's just on top of the Golden Bell in the heart of the city. Chilala! Chilala! Like, this little snake is wondering, are you going to ring the bell? Never mind the bell now. It doesn't mean anything anymore. And then it cuts to... Uh, Nolan and his crew eating at their cow. The Admiral seems lonely. Yeah, to be so far from home and to actually find someone he got along with so well. He figured he made a best friend for life. And then this. I don't get it. We strike anchor, f we strike anchor first thing tomorrow morning. The villagers look like they're ready to kill us. It'd be foolish to approach them. And the bell didn't ring today either. And it has a snake at night still looking up at the bell wondering if it's going to ring. And then it looks like Muse, who's looking up. Looking up towards the sky as well, and then Nolan's just kicking back as well. Y'all need to explain with me. Y'all need to explain with me to me what's going on. And then it cuts to someone leaving their house and running. And then it cuts to Nolan's sleepy crew with one person still standing guard. Ugh, what a sad note to it. What a sad end to a great village. And then someone uh, rustles behind him going, ah! Um, Musei? Doctor, could I have a word with you? And then it cuts to Calgara as he's sitting in a clearing of trees. And he calls himself a botanist. And he's sitting in a clearing of trees because the clearing the trees... The clearing of these trees... A oh, ton of trees. Oh, okay... I get it. He's sitting in... Okay, so Calgar is sitting in a clearing of trees, and a bunch, a ton of them have been cut down in front of him. And he calls himself a botanist. Noland, is this a sacrifice for your so-called progress? Then I should have never accepted you people. Uh, ancestor trees? Yes. The souls of our ancestors who have died on this island over the past several centuries are said to dwell in them, guided there by the sound of the bell. There are white holy trees. All our ancestors who lived on this island ever since the age of Shandora watch over us from these trees. To us Shandians, the forest of ancestor trees was something precious, even sacred. We protected them as we would our own lives. And we went and chopped them down. The warriors were furious and reached for their weapons at once, but we owe you... We owe you for saving so many of our lives, so... I see. All that pent-up anger is the reason behind the sudden change in their attitude. So! 
That's the reason why they all hot and bothered. Because Nolan and his crew were cutting down trees. But you couldn't tell them that? All this time y'all spent with Nolan and his crew and the whole subject of like, our ancestor trees are over in this section. Y'all can do what y'all want, but don't cut them trees down. That never came up in conversation at all. How y'all gonna get mad over something they didn't know? Huh? That's like me being mad at someone who eats like my favorite chocolate pie inside the fridge. Now, mind you, I ain't never tell them that it was going to be my favorite pie and I was going to eat it later. But I ain't got no right to get mad at them for them not knowing that I was going to get I was going to eat it later. That's be, that's skill issue. Skill issue. I didn't tell them. That's my fault. It's not there. It's not on them because they ate my food. It's on me for telling them not to eat my food. Maybe I'm taking this too seriously. Let's move on. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, ah. <laughs> oh, okay, sometimes it's just like, it'd be, it be like that sometimes. I see. All that pent-up anger is a reason behind the sudden, sudden change in their attitude. Even if there was for your research, even if you didn't know about the tree's meaning, the village's anger wouldn't be quelled. You would think that would be the first thing that they mention? You would think. Especially if they get, especially if they get, if they become so comfortable with Nolan and his crew after saving their entire village and then leading them to a city that has tons of golden treasure in it. You would think that that would be one of, if I'm going to introduce people into my village and they're outsiders and I get used to them, the first thing I'm going to do is tell them like, hey, we're buddies and I just want to keep things on the up and up so because you don't know our ways. So those trees over there, that vast array of trees, if you see a white tree, don't touch it because we consider it very sacred. You can have any other tree that you want, but just don't touch the white ones. Okay, I'm an understanding individual. We won't touch those white trees. You see how smoothly that conversation went? How quick that conversation went? But no. We ain't going to say nothing, and then we going to get mad when they do something we didn't warn them about. Hmm. They need to go. They need to leave. People ain't my... People... people mm, 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 mm. It makes me hot. It makes me hot, because people think that you need to be a mind reader. It's all like, well... Like, people... Because people get mad nowadays when they do... When people do things that is... That no one else warns them about. It's all like, why is he doing that? Why is she doing that? Did you tell him? No, but he shouldn't be doing that in the first place. Tell him! Just tell him! We ain't got no mind readers in the world! Mm. It's like all this could be avoided if you just told him. All of this could have been avoided if you just told him. You can't tell me that unless every single tree... That's in that forest are all white trees. Then that might be an issue. If all those trees are all white trees, and every tree, if every, well, actually, if every tree in that forest is all sacred to them, I mean, you still should have told them. You still should have told them. Let's keep going. Because I, I still got chapters. Who do they think Nolan was? Charles Xavier? No, let's see here. See here, Charles Xavier would have gotten to the point where he would have told him, like, hey, we're here to help. We're not here to do anything towards you. He would have told him. He would have told him. We fine. We friends. We ain't gonna do nothing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We need to keep going. Even if it was for your research, even if you didn't know about the tree's meaning, the village's anger won't be quelled. So, before you set sail, I wanted to at least know why you did it. And then it cuts to Nolan and his crew as they prepare to set sail. All right, pull her up. Ah, it's falling. Did you tie it properly? I need some help over here. It's so heavy. So, that's why. Trees that house their ancestors' souls. There's no making amends for something like that. The villagers' anger is completely justified. We respect our ancestors as we would gods. But, Admiral, in that situation... There are no excuses for it. I did what I thought was right. They said, they said that, as well as boasting of the city's existence, 
they, they said that, as well as boasting of the city's existence, the sound of that bell guided the souls of their ancestors to this land. We cut down the trees that housed those souls. There's no reason for them to forgive us. See, here's why I really like Nolan. He's understanding. He's far more understanding than the Shandians. Uh, in this situation, he's all like, we did a bad thing. There's no making up for it. There's no making up for it. There's no reason for them to forgive us. Admiral, listen up, men. Uh, what? Leave all the gold behind? And then it cuts to Muse. Then it cuts to Muse, who's running through the forest. Noland and his men have begun making preparations to sail. Uh, Muse! Muse, why are you in such a rush? Uh, where's Papa? Muse, where have you been? Uh, what if... What if one single precious tree was ravaged by a deadly poison? And the poison in that one tree eventually spread throughout the forest and ate away at people? If we had known that the poison would kill the island, what would we have done with that one precious tree? Wait a minute. Uh, what are you saying, Muse? What is this about? Papa, you must go and stop them! Hurry! If you part ways like this, you'll regret it for the rest of your life! Don't be a fool! Do you know what they... He's an irreplaceable friend! One you might never have met at all! His actions have saved our people, and if you let him go now, you leave him with a wound that would last his whole life! What are you saying? I suppose this will sound like we're making excuses, but for the sake of the animal's honor, I'm going to tell you. That force you spake of was already dead. What? What? So wait, 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 wait! It's not the fact that they cut down ancestral trees. They cut down the trees so that whatever happened to those wouldn't spread to the... Yo! Okay! No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me go. Let me, let me read. Let me read. Let me read! That force you speak of was already dead. What? The truly frightening part of the tray fever sickness is that it infects plants as well. It moves from people to forest, from forest to people. There are many cases where it completely destroyed small islands. He knew what devastation it would cause. That's why the Admiral was so desperate trying to convince you all. Even a hundred deaths is just the beginning for tree fever. We were only able to stop the damage because he risked his own life. We cut, tree, we cut down trees here and there in other places besides that forest. But these trees had already been infected by tree fever. It was too late for them. If we hadn't moved fast enough, they would have infected other trees, and this entire island would have been swallowed up in its path. Is that... Wow! Okay, yo, Nolan's a legend! Even if it meant looking bad in the eyes of the Shandians, he did what he did to still save them! Stop! Okay, Nolan. Nolan, you're one of my favorite characters. Now that... See, this is the benefit of me reading these volumes from the very beginning. I get to appreciate this story so much more. Wow. Wow, this is unfair. This, I've, been missing, I've been missing out on so much. I've been missing out on so much not fully reading these stories from the very beginning. Oh, wow. Wow. Ain't no way. Ain't no way! Okay. If we hadn't moved fast, moved fast, they would have infected other trees, and this entire island would have been swallowed up in its path. Is that true? But you don't have to worry anymore. Yesterday, we finished checking the entire forest. We didn't know those trees were so precious, and we didn't even explain. I'm sorry. We might not be forgiven, even with an explanation, but a botanist would never damage a forest with no reason. Trust me, the Admiral doesn't hate gods or deities. It's just that he always knows what's most important. And then it cuts to the shocked faces of everyone in the village as they realize that they were being nasty, rude, and mean to Nolan and all of his crew for no reason. 
for all based on false assumptions. Nolan wasn't just saving the lives of the people infected with the fever. He basically saved the entire island. And thus everyone's still alive in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love Nolan. I love him. He'd only been thinking of us, protecting us this whole time, while we were enraged over what we'd lost. If things like th stay like this, we'll lose something even more precious. And then it cuts to Calgara, who just makes a mad dash. He's like gone from the next panel. Calgara! They cut down all the ancestor trees for our sakes, but we... Calgara! It's too late to go to the ocean now! The ships probably set sail already! Noland, I'm sorry! Don't go yet! Alright! Let's... Uh, Alright! All set? Well, run and anchor! Take a good last look at it. We won't ever be coming back to this island again. Everybody, everyone aboard! Nobody's forgotten anything! Did we forget anything? Ugh, I forgot something. And it cuts to one crew member thinking about all the gold they left behind. Oh, let it go. Right, then let's set sail. Set a course for Marie Joie and contact North Blue. We're going home to Livnil Kingdom. Marie Joie? Marie Joie? Say what? <laughs> set a course for Marie Joie. We're going home to Livnil Kingdom. And then it cuts to the doctor, you know, the one that was talking to Muse, and it shows Calgara moving with all haste. Wait, Noland, how could I be such a fool? Raise the sail! And then it shows the bell ringing. It, sh it shows the clanging of the bell as the ship sails off. Hey, Moreau, that's the sound of the golden bell! Why? Ring it! Ring it! Ring it! Ring it harder! Ring it so that no one and the rest can hear it! And it shows that it shows Seto along with some of, of long, with a long group, a long group of uh, Shandians who are just pulling on the bell to make it ring with all of their might. Yo, this chapter is everything. This chapter is amazing! <laughs> Yeah! Nolan, we're so sorry! Amaro, look! And Kolgara gets to the beach. Nolan! Kalgara. And Kalgara, with tears in his eyes, just screams, Come back again! I'll be waiting for you here on this island. We'll keep ringing the bell for you. And then it cuts back to when, it cuts back to the words, We'll be here, always. So that when you return, your boat won't get lost on the ocean. So that you won't lose your way to this island, even in a storm. We'll ring the bell waiting for you. Let's meet again, my friend. And then Nolan just starts tearing up. Calgaras just starts tearing up. Hey, Moro. And because uh, Nolan drops to his knees, just crying his eyes out. It's okay to come back. I will. I will come back again. We'll meet again. I promise you. And that is the end of chapter 291. Chapter 292, To Meet, Like the Half Moon Hidden by the Clouds. Well, Chapter 292, To Meet, Like the Half Moon Hidden by the Clouds. Ace's Great Search for Blackbeard, Volume 18. An arson incident flares up in the top-secret naval reconnaissance ship. And it cuts to Ace, who still has this whole uh, Vice Admiral Captain suit on, and he's still drinking this coffee that's incredibly bitter that no one really likes. But we continue on. We continue on with the story of Nolan. <clears throat> in a country in the North Blue. Good morning, Mr. Nolan. Ah, good morning. 
there lived a man called Montblanc Noland. Noland, the explorer, always told stories about his adventures that seemed too fantastic to be true. Tell us about the country of dwarves! Sure, why not? It was when I was still... But the people of the village didn't know whether they were made up or the truth. One day, Nolan returned from a voyage. It's Nolan's boat! Welcome home, Nolan! He made his, he made his report to the king. Tell us stories! They call this place Shandora. Even though it's fallen into ruin, it still stood beautiful and proud. It truly was the famed city of gold, El Dorado. And then the king just is so... His eyes are just wide as he just... Because I can tell what type of king this is. This is a king that is not interested in the history or the knowledge of the... There's another country out there uh, with people on it or anything. He, they, he's only interested in the gold. The gold of Cortes, the jewels of Pizarro, will be like mere trinkets by this time tomorrow. The gold we find here will dwarf. Then by far, oh, with all you got in your boys. Dig up Shandora, boys. Mine, boys. Mine till you drop and just dig, boys. Dig till you slop. <laughs> it's, like, it's just like that, like Ratcliffe from Pocahontas. Because the king and his right hand are all like, ye gold. Live new kingdom five years later. And it cuts to a slightly older Nolan. He's got like a little stubble on his chin. We've finally gotten permission from Marie Joie to enter the Grand Line. As such, I would again like to appoint you as Admiral Van... Oh, we've finally gotten permission. A king rubbing his palms together. The worst kind of king. Yes, rubbing his palms over the prospect of profit. And not prosperity. We've finally gotten permission from Marie Joie to enter the Grand Line. As such, I would again like to appoint you as Admiral of an Exploration Ship. It be my honor, Your Majesty. Nolan just see, the, sees the exploration. Just sees the, the joy of the exploration. But your usual crew won't be joining you this time. My soldiers will be accompanying you instead. As will I. I trust you find this agreeable, Admiral, because he only wants to... I know why he brought the soldiers. I can already tell you why he brought the soldiers. I don't think it's going to be explained why he brought the soldiers, but I know why he brought it. Because he intends to, you know, take the gold. The soldiers are there to make sure that the king can take the gold without reproach. That's why the soldiers are with them. They're not there to just explore. They are there to take. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's just what I know just from a king like this. As will I. I trust you find this agreeable. That was amazing. I can definitely see doing theater singing. Just saying, look, this isn't the first time that someone's asked me if I ever took classes in theater. This is, this is, this is not the first time. People from my previous jobs actually brought that up to me as well. And also someone who, who never met me before, because I did some like, uh, I did some like work, some uh, audiovisual work for like a uh, like a, uh, like a short-term internship with a, a very successful businessman who I also go to church with. Um, I was asked if I ever took, like, did public speaking because the way that I present myself, apparently I'm good at public speaking somehow, just from how I present myself. So that's another thing as well. So it's like, wow, who knew that me joining my church band would open up this spectrum of me? This individual you see before you was not the same, uh, was not the same type individual over 15 years ago. 15 years ago, I was a completely different person. But now it's like, yeah, I am so happy to be where, what I am and who I am now. <laughs> As will I. I trust you find this agreeable, Admiral. In that case, please prepare yourself for great dangers. No land! It's a sea monster! It's a sea monster! Save me! Admiral Nolan, the wind's torn the sail! The third ship is gone! We've been separated! It's an iceberg! The helm won't respond! Admiral Nolan! Nolan! Nolan, do something! Aren't we there yet? 
We'll never survive with such hastily trained soldiers as a crew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Repray... See, this is the reason why Nolan's King is an idiot. I know I keep pausing in between the story, but we need to explain this. The reason why you need a crew that knows what they're doing is though that is so that moments like this don't happen. When you replace an entire crew of people who are well trained to pilot an entire galleon, you don't replace all of those people with soldiers whose only job is to fight and was trained and was just recently trained how to pilot a boat within a week's time. I don't know if it was a week's time, but they were just, they were quickly trained to pilot a ship, but they didn't have the experience. Exactly, Ozzy. This is the price of having an inexperienced crew. And you looking at Nolan like, Nolan, do something! Well, if you had the rest of his crew, you wouldn't have to ask just Nolan! I'm sorry, but this is what happens when you have royalty that is just, you know, also stupid at the same time. <sighs> we'll never survive with such hastily trained soldiers as a crew. I've got to at least keep this ship that the king's on afloat to the death if I have to. November 16th in the year 1127. I just realized we can put a time frame. We can put a time frame to the timeline of One Piece with this. Because if they're giving us a recounting of the events of Nolan 400 years ago, and the year is 1127, then in the future, the time would be 1427. Well, 400 years ago, so it would be 1500. The year 1527. This is 400 years in the past. And they have an actual date, a year, when this is happening. The age of November 16th, 1127, the age of Cayenne. So if we're go 400 years in the future, then the time would be 1527. Plus you had the time skip, and it would be 1529. Huh. I never thought of that. But we have like a timeline like a year of where One Piece is taking place. But we don't have the definitive amount of months, but we at least have the year, 1529. Well, in this is 1527. Later on is 1529. So One Piece is set in the 1500s. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. November 16th. 1127, the age of Cayenne. Now, mind you, the timeline, like, that can't be a definitive way to describe the year because the way that we have like 1500 AD or 1500 BC and stuff like that, and then we have the year 2000s and the 1900s and stuff with leaving out the 80s and BCs. So that could just be like the time in the age of Cayenne. So the age, the year that you can tell what's happening could be fundamentally different or just non-existent overall. November 16th, 1127, the age of Cayenne. Nolan, is this it? Yes, there's no mistake. And then as Nolan and company are looking around, we see what would later become the shoreline of Mont Blanc Cricket's living place. The 16th century, to be exact. Yeah, it's roughly about that. But that's only for going by our own normal timeline. Because the timeline of One Piece is very, extremely finicky. And we can't really be official with that that's just a that's just an assumption of mine but it's just something i thought about but nolan and the king and his hastily trained soldiers including his right hand who's looking behind him with a devious face he almost reminds me of ratcliffe except ratcliffe was like seven feet tall and broad at the shoulders this dude is just looking around deviously like he he gold 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 nah, 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 nah. that's just how this dude is looking but we see what would later become mont blanc cricket's uh shoreline and the portion of Jaya that where the Shandians lived, that is now in the sky. Because we don't see that portion of the we don't see that portion of the island anymore. We just have that sheer cliff face. Like something's carved off the island entirely. And then it cuts to Nolan, who's just looking confused, going, Why? Why does the island drop off here? Nolan, you fool! 
Did you deceive me? Where's all the gold you said there'd be? That's the only reason why this, like I said, that's the only reason why this king even bothered going on this trip, because he wanted his hands on the gold. And it shows Nolan being beaten up by his soldiers. Where, where did the village go? What happened on this island? Calcutta? if you're alive, let me hear it. Let me hear the sound of that golden bell. Live Neil Kingdom. Ring for me. Light of Shandora. Nolan's public execution is about to begin. Six years ago, on an island called Jaya in the Grand Line, I saw a great city of gold. El Dorado exists. Then let us, then let us hear the testimony of one who traveled with Nolan six years ago. Is it true? What is it true? What Nolan says? And then some dude that I don't recognize just goes, No, it's a bald faced lie. What? Can this. Huh? How can this be? Nolan was a liar? Then all the adventure stories he told before were also. That's just cruel. He deceived the whole country, pretending to be a hero. Hey! Hey! Everybody! Over here! Ah! Admiral! Why is he on an execution stand? Hey, wait, what's with that witness? I've never seen that guy before. Who is that guy? He's not one of the crew. Wow. Okay. This volume I have has a big old watery smudge mark on it. I can make out everything, but it's, I mean, at least it's not in the middle of a speech bubble, but, ah. Uh. And, it, and it's only for this one page. It's only for this one page, so it's like a weird anomaly. I don't know. Uh, uh. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Who is that guy? He's not one of the crew. Hey, move it. Let us through. Admiral! What happened? Did you get to see Calgara and everybody? Men, hold them. Hold them. Sire. Admiral! As it cuts to... Uh... Cuts to all of Nolan's crew being held down and forced to watch as Nolan is preparing to be executed. For the crime of deception with his lies, I sentence the explorer Montblanc Nolan to death by beheading. And then everyone's just screaming out, Liar! 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 Kelgara, where are you now? Are you alive? As if the Admiral would lie! Admiral! Liar! Admiral! I'm just worried for your safety. Liar! And then it just cuts to silence and we cut back to Jaya. Jaya, one year before Nolan's return. Galgara! Hmm? Oh, Seto. Oh, Seto. You're going to ring. You're going to ring the bell, aren't you? I'm coming to. I'll come help. <laughs> hey there, Nola. You've made yourself right at home here in the ruins, have you? Shoot, -la -la -la! Say, Calgara, when do you suppose Nolan and the others will return? <laughs> That's all you ever talk about when we come here. Jo, jo. Getting here is no easy voyage. Plus, he has a family of his own to take care of, far away in the Northern Sea. But we made a promise. As long as we keep on ringing the bell here, someday he'll show up. And then it just shows the bell being rung. Jo! Jo! Hmm? What is it? An earthquake? The sky is pitch black, too! This is serious! Come, Seto! We must protect the village! And then it shows a massive earthquake as the island, as a section of Jaya, where Mont Blanc Cricket's house would be, that island splits fine down the middle, splitting that house straight down the middle. And as it happens, there's a massive knock-up stream. A massive knock-up stream as it sends that portion of the island straight into the sky. Literally a knock-up stream powerful enough to lift at a whole portion of an island just shoots up into the sky. And then... Then it shows, 
like a giant beanstalk growing, and then this same giant jack growing through the island itself. Well, actually, not growing through the island itself. The island falls on this giant jack and gets skewered by it, and that becomes Sky. That becomes Skypea. The that becomes the upper yard. And then we have the bell that's just there ringing, and all the Skypeans who are all who are already living on these skylines beforehand, they hear this bell ringing, and then they just listen to the great bell ring, and thus we have the reason why this island just fell into the sky. And as the light shines down on it, Almighty Kami, it's a huge force. What beauty! So much force! Huh. Did you hear it just now? The beautiful sound of that force. It's a blessing granted to us by heaven. It's the birth of a sacred land. That is where I must live. You say there are people there already? Drag them out! I am the Kami! And it shows that this one random big-headed dude with a big old fro and smoking a cigar, says like, well, I'm basically God, so now I'm going to go over there and live there. If there are people there, drive them out. And this is what causes the feelings. This is what causes the feelings of people who lived on the island to reclaim their homeland. This just random dude says like, I'm Kami, so get out. What happened? Is everyone all right? Is what? What happened? Is everyone all right? Hurry and tend to the injured. Expel them! Kagara, someone's... Protect the women and children. We're going to intercept them, warriors. What's this? It's so hard to breathe. This force will be mine. I am the almighty Kami. Uh, that's no good. We can't let them take this land. And it cuts to a jail cell. And apparently someone putting on their counts of what happened. We made a promise, didn't we, Nolan? We said we'd meet again someday. When you arrive at Jaya again and find us gone, I wonder what you'll think of us. Wait just a little longer. I'm going to tell you that we're right here. Since you left, the village has changed. The crops you gave us grew well. My daughter and Seto were married. There's so much I want to tell you about, Noland. Let's meet here again someday, no matter what, Noland. Bring back the light of Shandora! And that is the end of chapter 292. Onwards to chapter 293, Bolero! And we cut to the flashback as the old man, all over finally coming out of the flashback, we're finally coming back to the present day. Let's go! The great warrior Kalgara continued to shout, Bring back the light of Shandora. Even once would have been fine. He believed that the sound of the light of Shandora would tell his friend Nolan everything. Tell him that we were right here. But that bell did not ring even once. Later, a North Blue sailor who came to ice to Sky Island told this village everything. How Nolan, to whom we owed so much, had died in the Blue Sea, praising our city of Shandora. How, even when they called him liar, he would not stop defending the existence of Shandora, our homeland, to his dying breath. But it was already too late. His friend too, Cal his friend Calgara too, had died a glorious death in battle in the sky while trying to tell his friend of our fate. The fact that those feelings never reached his friend, that is the great warrior Kalgara's biggest regret. And then remind you, and mind you, we're not fully out of the present, uh, the flashbacks yet. I might have said we were in the present day, but we're not fully out of the flashbacks yet because we're, this story is being told to a young wiper. Say, Chief, do you think it would still reach him? The sound of that bell? If we rang it now, do you think it would reach Noland? <sighs> Perhaps. We are certainly close to heaven here. As this village elder just tears up. Then we cut back to Wiper in the present, 
when he was just staring out after standing up while this whole remember Mamaragan is still happening across the spot uh, the sky islands wiper 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 if we don't get away we're all gonna die wiper and then it cuts to wiper who goes Anaru, what gives you the right to take everything as lightning continues to bombard all of the islands. And then it cuts back to Usopp, who's a voice we haven't heard in a long time. Oh no! He's merciless! We have to run away! It's the end of everything! Yeah! <laughs> this is the sky. This is the domain of the Kami. Everything's an eyesore. People, trees, earth, all of it. Go back to where you belong. Turn all of it into rain that falls over the blue sea. Yeah! <laughs> I am the almighty Kami! And then it cuts to Eneru as he's just letting all this lightning just barrage all of the islands. Let's see. Over there, maybe. The hidden village of those detestable Shandian warriors. They were blue sea people to begin with. They should be thrilled to go home. Yeah! <laughs> Come now, descend to the mortal world. As lightning shoots towards the village directly towards the cloud of the where the hidden Shandorian people used to be, and a massive bolt of lightning just utterly destroys everything. Ah! Our village! No! That was close. If we'd left any later, we'd have been blown to pieces. And as this explosion pretty much incinerates the entire village, the only thing we see of that village is just a statue of Kalgara. And then we come back to Captain McKinley. To the sea! Hurry! Get to the sea! Angel Island won't hold much longer! Hurry! Get to the sea! To the sea! Captain! Captain McKinley! We got a lot of injured people here! Just get them onto the ships! You'll have to treat them there! No place on this island is safe anymore! And mind you, the lightning has not stopped just because these people are talking. That's... that... They're talking while their entire... Town is being destroyed by endless lightning. And one destroys the home of... Uh, that looks like the home of Connus and Pagaya. What a tragedy. I don't accept Eneru as a god! What would have happened if that girl had persuaded us any later? Just thinking of it gives me the shudders. Is she alright? That girl. There are some who don't know how to escape. I must go back. And then a light envelops where Captain McKinley is. And there's just a massive explosion as another bolt of lightning touches down. And I think Captain McKinley got caught in it. Then it cuts back to the Sunny as all of this insanity is happening. While Connus is still on the Mary. I'm sorry. I was the one who summoned the Special Lobster Express. And then it cuts back to uh, uh, Ganfor as he's as he was talking before, going, The sacred land will sing once more. Nami! Ka Connus! Pagaya! Anaru will kill every last person in the sky! Father. Yeah! <laughs> Look at all the little angels scurrying around. It's like a stirred-up ad trail. Return to your true place, Skypea. As... Eneru raises his hand and causes a bolt of lightning to fire down on some people who are actually trying to escape. Heaven's Gate, White Sea. Huh? There's a hole in the white, white sea! People are going to fall through it! Yeah! <laughs> I've got no more use for this old temple. Or for the city of Shandora below it! As he just unleashes lightning across... This entire area, and one bolt of lightning lands dangerously close to Usopp, Nami, and everyone else who's still recovering down below. 
and it winds up destroying a giant portion of the of the ruins they're next to, but also going straight down into Shandora itself. And it cuts to the snake that's still kind of unconscious down there. There's just one last thing I want from this country. That big golden bell tower. And then it cuts to Wiper. The golden bell? Is that what you just said? Yes. What are you people thinking? And it still cuts to an unconscious Sanji, Chopper, and Pierre. The bell. Anaru is after that? How do you know? Where is it? Hold it! Have you people lost your mind? We have to get away or we'll die! Near the top of this giant vine. We promised Nami we go on ahead and wait on the ship, remember? She'll be back real soon with Luffy! The ruins of Shandora on this lower, la lower layer. Mind you, no one's listening to Usopp, and I'm actually glad they're not. This coward is just like, he's a coward. He's just like, just stop, okay? But I, I know, I know, I know. I've read ahead, but you know. The ruins of Shandora are on this lower layer. This vine pierces through the center of the city, ground and all. But it said on the map of the ruins that the Great Belt Tower was located in the city center. In other words, the vine must have entwined with the, tower, with the bell tower and forced it up even higher. Hey, there's supposed to be a big, be a huge bell in El Dorado, right? And this cuts back to when Luffy was talking to everyone before they got separated a couple chapters back. And everyone's looking up. Everyone's looking up the vine that the Maxima is right next to. And there's someone still running up the vine. I still hear two voices. Jeez, that guy runs way too fast. I wonder if Nami is okay. <sighs> Anyhow, there's no way I'm giving you that golden bell, Enaru! And it cuts to Luffy, who's still running up the vine. We got chapter 294. I think we go up to 295. Hold on. Yeah, we're almost done. We're almost done. We got chapters 294 and 295, and then we are done with volume 31, and we are done with Skypea, and move on to Water 7. But before we get started with the last two chapters of this volume, we have another SBS. Question! Hello, Mr. Oda! Remember those aliens you thought of who were plotting world domination? I want to see Domoku, Comrade Ninku, so that, so, uh, Ninkeku, so bad you won't even believe it. Believe it. So please tell me about him, Chiwan. Answer, right. Uh, this is a secret character from a long time ago. I commented that he had comrades in a book called One Piece Blue, and I think that people got curious, so I'll introduce them here. This is Domoku, and this is Inkeku. Clap, 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 clap. I thought these guys up when I was in high school. They're also hiding in a few places in my short story. A present of the future from God, which is in my masterpiece collection, Wanted. Since I went and introduced them here, I might end up drawing them somewhere again. Question. Is that thing Kami Eneru wears on his head a rubber swim cap? Uh, and Oda just says, sure, yeah, that's it, whatever. Ah, no, wait, uh, no, wait a sec, there is, there's no rubber, there's, there isn't any rubber on Sky Island, is there? So it's cloth, yeah, that's it. Question. Hello, Oda-sensei. In the right-hand corner of the first panel on page 54 of volume 26, Zoro's just casually diving into the sea of clouds, isn't he? He must really have wanted to goof around, huh? And then it cuts to... Because Zoro apparently just dived into the clouds. Answer. Yeah, that guy's not so bright, is he? And that's the end of the SBS. Onwards to chapter 294, Kingdom Come! Ace's Great Search for Blackbeard, volume 19. Pirates set fire to the ship out of spite. There'll be trouble if the top secret information burns up! And mind you, Ace is still on the base somewhere. Wow, I've really gone on for two hours? This is a... Was these chapters really that long? Normally, I'd be done with, like, an average chapter. But apparently, these... Have, these me reading this has carried on for a lot longer than I thought. But it's all good. Well, now. And we cut to Eneru on the Maxim. Well, now. I've surpassed Giant Jack. I doubt anyone would have come searching so high above the Kami's temple in all these four, 400 years. Now then, where is it? Where's that golden bell? And then Enero looks downwards, 
And then we see Luffy, who's still running up the jack. Mind you, Luffy's running up the spiral of the jack. He's not just running straight up. He's just running around the spiral of it. And then it cuts to Luffy, who launches upwards. You were monologuing? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was. But Luffy comes crashing up straight through to where the Kami's temple is. What is this place? And then it cuts to Eneru, who sees him. Him again. Impressive that he got up that f- this far with that ball weighing him down. Ah, there you are! Hold it right there, Eneru! Pest. And then lightning... N- lightning shoots out and hits the jack before Luffy can get all the way up it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Ah! Yeah! <laughs> Wiper! Wiper! Don't! There's no point in climbing that now! Eneru's flying in the sky! You can't reach him! Get away from the vine! Something's falling down! And it's the other half of the vine that Eneru basically just electrified off with lightning. Just shot off with his lightning. That's the vine's tip. What's happening up there? Oh no! You don't think Luffy and Nami were on that when it fell, do do you? Wiper! See? You can't do anything with those, in- with those injuries! Goes Isa, and, not- and Robin just looks. It's right above us, right? The bell that the great warrior Kalgara longed for. And it cuts to Luffy, who still managed to hold on to the... Pardon me. Still managed to hold on to the vine, so he didn't let go completely. He looped his arm around it and held on. And just how you pl- and just how are you planning to climb up here? Why you? Yeah. <laughs> you just wait there. I'll show you something interesting. And then he disappears. And then more smoke starts pouring out of the Maxim. What? He's gone. Huh? What? As he sees lightning just going all over the towns, over all these islands, all these sky islands. Whoa! And then it cuts to Luffy, who's apparently made it up the vine back to the Kami's temple again. Ugh. Ugh. All right. I made it back. Ugh. I'll get onto that boat now while I can. And then uh, Nami comes up and hits Luffy in the back of the head. Ow! Luffy! Huh? Nami? What are you doing here? I came to get you! Sanji and Usopp had come to save me. They did, huh? Oh, that's great. And mind you, um, Nami kind of has her waiver kind of parked on Luffy's face and he's just casually talking to her. Never mind that. We've got to... Huh? Wait. What's that? These thunderclouds are changing shape! To the sea! Hurry! To the sea! The the sky's pitch black. There's a big ball floating in the sky. That thing's bad news. Inside that thing are a swarm of fierce air currents and sheet lightning discharges. It's right over Angel Island. The thundercloud... It's right over... It's right over Angel Island. The thunderclouds form a sphere. It's a nightmare! I'm telling you guys, this is the end! And this is Usopp just losing his mind once again. What's he planning? Goes Ganfor. Ganfor. And then we have Eneru. Yeah! <laughs> Heaven is mine! Now you will know, with the Arc Maxim in my power, I can perform the greatest miracles the world has ever seen! And it, he's just building up so much power. And he's just smiling as this big, giant ball just starts to sink closer and closer and closer towards Angel Island. And it starts to touch buildings, and buildings are just instantly getting destroyed underneath it. It's falling onto Angel Island! The sky is falling! And then it shows that ball getting closer and closer as Eneru goes, Kingdom come! And this ball hits the ground, and then it explodes. It's basically a giant nuke going off, but it's just full of lightning. 
explosive lightning just decimates, fills the entire, both, two, both pages. And light just envelops every view from every individual who's escaping. The Shandians, the people from Angel Island, Zoro and, every, and Robin and everyone else, and Luffy and Nami, as the entire area is just, just goes up. And then as the smoke clears, all the people who lived there on Angel Island can only look in utter horror. That can't be! In that one instant, our island just... Did the White Berets get away in time? They saved us! The island where we were born! It's gone without a trace! The entire sea cloud! The entire sea cloud it was on was decimated! As it shows that this attack from Eneru, basically... You ever see... Remember, we've seen when people disrespected or talked bad about the vassals and Eneru. They were enveloped in a blinding light and then a small, a small hole. A, well, a big gaping hole was left where, where they got killed. Yeah. Imagine that. But on a nationwide scale, and nothing is left. It's just a big, giant, gaping hole. You couldn't even tell if Angel Island was ever there to begin with. It's just a big, giant hole that's now gone. And then light starts shining through that hole. Yeah! Mmm, <laughs> what a great view. This is how the sky should be. And then lightning just continues to pour down all around everywhere else on top of this big, massive electrical nuclear explosion. What was that huge explosion? And the lightning still falling like raindrops! I don't think we're gonna live to see another day! Usopp is just... just beside himself with terror. He completely erased Angel Island. How can this be? How could he? This is too villainous, Zenoru. How could you? These tremors are huge, but I have to wait. I have to make sure they get back to the Blue Sea safely. And this is Connus, who doesn't know what just happened. But everything that she's ever known is just basically gone. And then it cuts back to Nami and Luffy. Luffy, just get on! We have to get down from here! Everybody's already headed for the ship! We've gotta hurry and get there too! I can't do that. Can't? Why not? What are you saying? Even if I don't have to save you anymore, I still have some unfinished business here. What? What could you possibly still have to do here? You're not trying to get revenge on Eneru, are you? The Golden Bell is up here in the sky. The Golden Bell is up here in this sky. The Golden Bell? Who cares about that? The gold doesn't matter anymore. Saving our lives comes first. Look at that thing. Even if lightning doesn't work on you, he's still, gonna, he's still got enough power to destroy everything else. If it's gold you want, you've already got a ton of it stuck to your arm. Just give up on the golden bell. You'll get killed. I won't die. Just give it up. We have to. You saw it too. What? El Dorado. It really existed. Huh? It wasn't a lie. And this is, goes back to Mont Blanc Cricket when he was explaining things. It doesn't matter where I, whether I find it or not. This is my battle with the man who ruined my life. The Diamond Head guy's ancestor wasn't lying. So I gotta let them know that down, so I gotta let them know that down there, that El Dorado was in the sky. And Nami is just like shocked that this is one of the reasons that Luffy's doing this. If I ring the bell, they should be able to hear it. If I don't, they'll just keep searching the ocean floor until they die. Luffy. There's no way I'm gonna let Anaru take it. They should be able to hear a bell that big from anywhere. So I'm gonna ring that golden bell. And that is the end. That is the end of chapter 294. Onwards to the last chapter of this volume, 295. But first, we got one final SBS. Question. Hello, my name is Akihiko. This is sudden, but Oda-sensei, I found a mistake on page 155 of volume 28. I assume you've gotten a lot of postcards telling you already. I'm sure you're very busy, so I thought of an answer you can give. The answer is that during the surprise dial illusion, Hotori and Kotori's necks began, became able to spin around. Right? Uh, well, yes, it all makes sense now. And then it cuts to...
next begin became able to spin around i never got that impression when i looked at that they locked arms and then they just started spinning around together that's what i got from it but we got oda's answer answer whoa akihiko you're such a nice guy i'm so happy you're right i got an incredible amount of mail pointing that out somehow the dials the two were holding got all mixed up sorry about that i was pretty impressed at how carefully people were looking ah uh, that shows you that i'm not one of those people then I was pretty impressed at how careful people were looking, and at the same time, I was trying to figure out what to do. And just as I was thinking, I did ignore it. Hey, now. There was your postcard. It brought tears to my eyes. Thank you. Good job, Akihiko. Everybody. So that's what happened. Right. Question. Hello, Oda-sensei. It's nice to meet you. Getting right to the point. I've been watching the One Piece anime, and I got a question. It's about him, Panda Man. He shows up in the same scenes in the anime as he does in the manga. Does that mean you remind the anime people where he shows up? Answer. No, no. I've never mentioned it to them. Actually, even if I don't draw him, he tends to show up. That's just the animators having some fun. I've told the voice actors to play around at an ad lib and except for the important plot points, I'd like them to keep having fun with the story. Ah, freedom. When they have fun, that emotion it, uh, communicates itself to the viewers, too. And that wraps up the question corner. See you in the next volume. Chapter 295, Giant Jack. Ace's Great Search for Blackbeard, Volume 20. A lone Navy man dives into the inferno. And I'm guessing that this is Ace. Because this is a good way for him to just disappear away from the Navy. <laughs> and it cuts to Luffy... Cuts to Luffy as he's climbing and he's man managing to hold on to the Maxim with the big golden ball holding him down. Made it! And then Eneru, standing on this edge, just kicks his hand off. Eneru! Yeah! <laughs> Who gave you permission to board this boat, hmm? And then Luffy falls right back down again. Luffy! See? I told you it was reckless. That jerk. Yeah! <laughs> How was it? Did you see that idiotic island disappear from the sky? Girl, don't think you can tell me now that you want to go to Endless Vars. I never! Once I've gotten what I want, I'll erase the whole of Skypea with my kingdom come. I won't let anyone escape. Not even the handful of voices on the cloud below you will survive. Huh? I'll do away with all the people unsuited for this sky. I'll return everything to its rightful shape. That is my duty as the Kami! And then it cuts to Luffy, who runs up, going, As if I let you get away with that! Luffy! And then Luffy, running up the vine, gets knocked right back off the vine again by another bolt of lightning. Yeah! <laughs> Goodbye, rubber man! I hope to never see you again. Just stick your thumb in your mouth and wait for your death. Nobody can stop me now. And then Luffy gets on Nami's waiver and goes, That's it! Nami, I'm borrowing this! Hey! And then Luffy tries to ride up, but he falls along with the waiver. I will not fail. You're going up to the sky. And this is Cricket speaking to him before they even went up there, after Bellamy had beaten him up. Why, you... I, I gotta let them know! I'm gonna ring that bell! And then Luffy grits his teeth while Nami watches on. Hey, there's supposed to be a huge bell in El Dorado, right? According to Nolan's journal, yes. He did write that there was one. What about it? What's up? <laughs> I just thought it's something great! If we rang that bell up here in the sky, do you think the diamond head guy and the monkeys down below could hear it? Right? They could hear it, right? They could hear it, right? And then it just shows lightning just continuing to shoot down. It shows lightning continuing to shoot down. And then it cuts back to Usopp and the rest of the crew. Then he's... He did say that, but under these circumstances. And then Ganfor's there and Wiper goes, Ring the bell. And then Zoro finally speaks up after being unconscious all this time. If he says he's going to do it, he will. Once he puts his mind to something, there's no stopping him. Even if Nami tries to bring him back, he won't go with her. He and Eneru are after the same thing. And then, as the lightning continues to rain down across everyone who still managed to survive this kingdom come, 
at least the people who managed to escape before the Kingdom Come came. How can this be? We haven't just lost our island. We lost our only escape route. Heaven's Gate has been decimated along with the Angel Island. We can't descend to the White Sea now. We won't make it to Cloud's End. So we just have to wait here, unable to do anything? Wait to be destroyed like Angel Island? No! This is too much. We're just, we're just waiting to be slaughtered by Kami Yenaru. And then it shows as lightning continues to go, as lightning continues to, uh, as lightning continues to hit the ground, cloud, some of the white, the white, white sea is starting to actually disappear. The white, white sea is disappearing! Then it shows the Maxim flying towards a spot that has like a, that has like a golden ting in the distance. And Eneru sees it and he jumps off towards it. So, this is it. And Anaru stands directly in front of the Golden Bell of Shandora. Brilliant! So this is the Great Bell Tower, the pride of the legendary city of Shandora. The bell that ushered in 400 years of fighting. Wonderful! As the Kami, I'll take this with me and finish my ascent to Endless Vars. And then it cuts to the long jack that's above everyone and a giant leaf falls down. Ah! Look out! Something's falling! Ah! Everybody get down! It's a leaf. It's a leaf. And it cuts to Isa. Huh? There's something written on it! It's a message! It's a... It's a message from Luffy and Nami! It's a message from Luffy and Nami! What does it say? What? Cut down this giant vine. So that it falls to the west. What? Why? What would that do? Ah, look at that! And it cuts to everyone looking up. Henaru! That fiend. It's way bigger than the last one. There's no escaping this time. This country is doomed. As it shows an even larger black ball. One that's even bigger than the one that destroyed all of Angel Island. An even larger one is above the Maxim. Like, the Maxim is just, just like an ant in comparison to this thing's size. Yeah! <laughs> Farewell, Skypea. Kami Enaru! Kami Enaru! It's even bigger than the last one! I might need to change the description of this because it doesn't look like uh, Luffy's beating Enaru in this volume. So I might need to change the description of it before I go. It's even bigger than the last one! That jerk! He's planning to take out the whole country this time! That must mean he found the golden bell! He's planning to take out the whole country this time! That must mean he found the golden bell! Anaru said that there were voices right below us, so the others haven't headed back to the boat yet. I hope they got our message. Nami, aren't you gonna get going? You wanna ring the golden bell, don't you? Yeah, I'm gonna ring it! I'm gonna wreck it! I'm gonna ring it! If I left you this waiver, you'll just end up crashing it again. So I guess I'll just have to give you a lift. But you better, you better promise me you'll keep me alive. All right, leave it to me. Let's do this. We'll only get one chance, just one instant. They're going to cross the... Uh, they're going to cross the vine as it falls and jump onto the ship? There's nothing else it could be. That's absolutely nuts! Then why don't you go up there? Then why don't you go? Then why don't you go up there and stop them? As if anyone could stop them! Crazy or not, they have to do it. And then, as they're speaking, a large blast of lightning almost hits them again. Ah! What now? Ah! Get to solid ground! If we stay here, we'll fall into the ruins! Yeah! Ha 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 ha! It's too late, worms. What are you scampering around for now? What are you scampering around for now? Your fate was sealed the moment you people challenged me. And then it cuts to Zoro. Let's do it. We'll just have to topple the vine towards the ship, right? Huh? And then Wiper looks on. The only ones who can re reach Enaru before he drops that thing are those two. Zoro! They're our only hope! 
And then Zoro gets his sword ready as he runs towards the vine to do what they ask and cut the tree so that it cuts the jack down so it can fall to the west towards Enaru's ship. And as that as he's preparing to do that, it zooms in to Nami and Luffy. Okay, so we get the end. We officially get the end of Skypea in the last in the next volume. But this is this pretty much ends Skypea uh for volume's sake and because it goes into the next volume, but officially we might as well say that Skypea ends here because Water 7 starts in that volume. So I guess they don't count it there. But that's the last chapter for today, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta change the description. I gotta change the description because it's not accurate. It's because uh, it's not accurate to what was what was happening here. I thought this was going to be the actual end of Skypeo, but it wasn't. So I need to change. I had to change it. So now we might as well call it the history of Nolan the liar. All right. So then I'll use the description that I had for this one, and I'll put it for that one where uh, Enaru's reign of terror ends. That'll be the description for the next one. But we're done, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We are done. I am going to call it. A session for today. Thank you, everyone. I don't know if I had some new people show up today or if I had my usuals here, but either way, thank you for taking the time to watch me. I know the way that I read and, you know, go monologue uh, tends to be a little bit unorthodox for, you know, for people just trying to see One Piece and everything, but thank you for stopping by. I love doing this. I'll never stop doing this as long as I'm physically able, and I want to thank you for everyone who continues to contribute to this channel and keep it going with your, you know, support in any way that you see fit. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to have this opportunity. Um, later today, we're playing Final Fantasy 16. Let me be specific. We are playing the demo because the demo dropped last night after the Final Fantasy celebration, Final Fantasy celebration yesterday. So today we are going to be playing the Final Fantasy 16 demo that's out today. It's a, and they say it's two hours long, but y'all know me. I like to look at stuff. So we'll see how it is. After I eat lunch, or maybe before then, we will be playing the Final Fantasy 16 demo. I'll be giving my first impressions, but I'm already playing it day one. So I can't wait to mess with it. So we'll deal with that when we deal with it. I still got to set that stream up, so be patient with me. But I'm done. All I can say to everyone here as we move into the Water 7 saga is, hope you all enjoy. Can't wait to see you all in my next video. And if you enjoyed what you saw here today, then like, subscribe, share the stream with everyone you know, because the more the merrier. And maybe even consider becoming a member because I am always looking forward to entertaining you. So have a fantastic day. And once again, as always, later peoples.